Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have gathered in your house to hear your holy word. We pray that through it you would strengthen our faith. Grant us a richer measure of your spirit that we would grow in understanding of your will and of your love. Sanctify us then by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Please be seated. In Jesus the Christ, the Good Shepherd, dear fellow redeemed, God's grace, mercy, and peace are yours through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Is there a difference between a boss and a leader? Now, you might respond, no, they're really synonyms. They, they mean the same thing. But I want to suggest this morning that there is a subtle difference between a boss and a leader. A boss tells us what to do. Go here, do that. A leader motivates us to move in a certain direction. So a difference between a boss and a leader. Now, I don't want to push this too far because you may have a boss who is a leader. How do you view your pastor? Is he a boss or is he a leader? Maybe a better question to ask would be, how does God want his pastors, his shepherds to be? Bosses or leaders? Well, Peter in our text provides us with God's direction for pastors in how they are to function. And we read in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and as one who also shares in the glory that is about to be revealed, I appeal to the elders among you, shepherd God's flock that is among you, Serving as overseers, not grudgingly, but willingly as God desires. Not because you are greedy for money, but because you are eager to do it. Do not lord it over those entrusted to your care, but be examples for the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears you will receive an unfading crown of glory. We could say that God caused these words to be written specifically for pastors. And that would be true, but there's some general application for us all. How pastors are to function and how we are to view them. So bosses or leaders. Obviously, here in verse 3, Paul, uh, excuse me, Peter tells pastors that they're not to lord it over. They're not to simply bark orders and expect the flock of God to obey them. Now, that doesn't mean that they have no authority. There's a, a very important word in our text where it speaks of overseeing, watching over something, guarding something, protecting it, looking out for its good. And we can definitely see how shepherding would tie into that. A shepherd watches over the flock. He guards it. He protects it. He works for its good. He leads it to green pastures. So shepherds have authority. 
but it's how they use their authority that's important. And I would suggest that that's the subtle difference between a boss and a leader. God wants his pastors to use their authority to serve the sheep. I think that's a good thing. I think it's good that God has given someone authority over me to watch out for me. Because I'm a sheep. I tend to love to wander where I shouldn't go. I get myself caught up in things that I can't get out of. I make decisions at times that are just as dumb as we consider sheep. It's a good thing that God has placed someone over me with authority to keep watch, to keep me safe, and to protect me. Peter also reveals some good things about shepherds in their attitude toward the sheep. When he says that they're to keep watch, not grudgingly, but willingly as God desires. What would motivate a pastor to willingly watch over the sheep? I think there's a couple of things, but I think one of the the main things is that he loves his sheep. That he has a deep care for them. And that that care for those sheep motivates him to, to look out for them. I think it's a good thing that God has placed, for my case, two men over me who love me, who care for me and and have my best interest at heart. Then Peter also reveals, not greedy, so not doing it for money, but because they're eager to do it. We have to pay pastors. We want them to dedicate their lives to serving us, to watching over us. We have to support them financially, but God says that they're not to do it because of their financial reward. That's tough, because I think at times we all have days that we only get out of bed And go and do what's expected of us because we want to eat in the evening. We don't always love our job. But here God is giving pastors specific direction to not do it for the money. But to do it eagerly out of love for the sheep. So the fact that God has placed pastors over you is a good thing. And he is given specific direction for how they are to function. Specifically out of love for you. Now at the end of our text, it speaks of the chief shepherd, Jesus, returning and these elders, these pastors receiving a crown of unfading glory, that there will be a reward. That is a strong reminder for pastors that they're underneath this chief shepherd, Jesus. And they, they serve his flock. It was purchased with his blood. And that their task is always to direct people to the reward that Jesus has won. Your pastor's chief role is to connect you with the good shepherd who loved you. Loved you so much that he laid down his life 
for your sins. God has sent pastors into your life so that they can tell you that your sins are forgiven. And that we don't just have a dead shepherd. We have one who died and rose again, demonstrating his power and victory over sin, death, and the devil, our three greatest enemies. Jesus has sent pastors into your life so that you can know that God loves you. And that despite the bad decisions that you make, despite where you wander, where you get caught up, He is always desiring to bring you back, to keep you close and in His love. God has given you pastors Because he loves you. So pray for your pastors. They have a tough job. They're sinful too. They need to be reminded of God's love for them at times. That's something that we don't think about. Reminding our pastors that God loves them too. So pray for them, encourage them, walk with them because they're the leaders that God has sent you to get you to heaven. May God bless us all and keep us together under his shepherds so that finally we see our chief shepherd face to face. To him be the glory now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, You are the good shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. And you demonstrated your victory over sin, death, and the devil by rising from the dead. You have now ascended into the glory of heaven and rule all things for the good of your church. But you have not left us alone to fend for ourselves. You have given your church shepherds, pastors, to watch over your people and to lead them to the green pastures of your word and sacrament. We pray that you would continue to send pastors to serve us. We pray that you would strengthen the pastors that you have given us now. Lift them up and strengthen them for the difficult work that you have given them. Help us to encourage them to assure them that in their failings they too are forgiven. We also pray that you would help us to support them financially the way that they deserve. We pray that you would watch over all that we do so that together we finally make it to heaven. Grant us your spirit to these ends. For Jesus' sake, amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.